This is my new laptop. It is an i7 2700H, 14 cores, 20 threads, 16 inch high res display at 2560 by 1600 with a beautiful magnesium chassis. It is the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 16. Obviously with all the logos and customization, I will be using this as my daily driver. Let's start pointing out some of the features that the Tuxedo has and then get on the desktop. So on the outside here, I kind of want to go through a couple things, notable features with this Tuxedo. One, it has these really cool features right here. So right now my mouse is going and I can just double tap and then my mouse is completely disabled. Tap again and I can re-go. That's a standard feature on all the tuxedos and I'll get into how they do that, the magic behind it, because I had to recreate it because I am not using any of the distros that are included with it, even though it has an amazing fully automated installer. If you wanna check out me reviewing that, uh, I did a review on their last year's uh, Infinity book. Uh, that one I didn't keep, that was just a review unit. This one, obviously, I'm doing a little more of a deeper dive and customizing down to interfacing with the hardware of the laptop, which I'm gonna get on the desktop and show you that. But other cool features, you have uh, a nice, corner over here, which we can map that to whatever we want. Uh, the entire backlit keyboard, it's this very soft white backlit. Sometimes the backlight bleeds through. I really like the Infinity Books because they're very, very subtle. So when you're in bed typing at night, you can still see the keys, but it's not just overpowering. So it's a, a really nice, sleek, minimal look. As far as the keyboard here, it has such a really nice feel. I have no problems typing. Uh, this is not the ISO standard keyboard. So a lot of times if you're switching from the ISO standard into more of the European standard, you're gonna miss the inner key a whole bunch because the inner key is real slim, but you also do pick up a couple extra keys. So I, it's kind of a trade-off. Something I'm trying new on this laptop is the new keyboard layout. Other notable features is the screen, which I already mentioned. And, you know, I really love it. It doesn't matter what viewing angle you're at. It has extremely beautiful viewing angles. So very good job on the screen. Overall look, if you're outside, I have a whole bunch of studio lights right now, so you should be seeing a bunch of glare, but you're not. It, it does a very good job of uh, dissipating that. So if you want to use this outside, like let's say in a park, you could do that as the screen brightness goes up to 400 nits. So with that, let's dive on the desktop because I really want to get into kind of overviewing what all this thing's capable of and also what I've done to it to make it kind of like my ultimate laptop for the next year or two. Now, before we jump into what all I've done to this thing, I just wanna say this runs Windows, it runs any version of Linux, it is completely open. The Tuxedo team has done a great job documenting everything and a lot of the stuff they built specifically for this hardware it's all open source and on github so if i want to recreate what they did to the touchpad i can do that because they left everything open source which makes this kind of like a developer's dream where if you buy like a asus hp whatever it might be a lot of times you won't see exactly what's done to that hardware and you're just kind of guessing and, and sometimes you're like oh well this function key is just not going to work a and that's because you don't have access or you don't have any idea what was done to it where tuxedo does a great job of documenting all this and i want to show this real fast like this is their actual get hub where they've documented the keyboard so if there's any function keys on here which there's numerous here's a little screenshot of their entire function key i've mapped brightness i've mapped the touchpad of course sound wi-fi you you name it you can map it to any of these function keys and if you want to change a function key you can do that as well because it's all right here in this loaded kernel module for for their keyboard which is great the touchpad also has some stuff but i actually ended up not using their touchpad project which it's right down here 
in the touch, Tuxedo Touchpad Switch project. This one was interesting. This is mostly for how they interface. It's using like an HID command, and I couldn't necessarily use this because I wasn't using a desktop environment. This project itself, built by them, is meant for KDE environments and GNOME environments and, and offshoots of them. So probably like Cinnamon and other ones probably will work as well. But obviously, since I'm not using any of, the, any of that, I can't use this project but I could see kind of what they're doing. And then I decided to take kind of a different approach. So obviously this is my window manager. You've seen it on a ton of different videos. I'll probably make an entire other video on how I kind of designed it. I've kind of squished the screen down to kind of blow things up on the screen. So when I pull up like terminal and things like that, you're gonna be able to see it. Uh, let's run our NeoFetch real fast, just so we can touch on the specs of this particular model. I'm not using any external GPU. So here's the notable things, obviously, it's a bare bone system. Right now I'm only using about a gig of memory and I have a lot of special things loaded here. Uh, from my file manager to my terminal, everything's set up for my development environment, how I want to develop videos, projects for GitHub, whatever it might be, I can develop it in this environment, which makes it so nice. So let's get into actually how I change this environment, how I'm you know, mapping these keys, these function keys on their keyboard. This is kind of a fun little project I want to explain. First off, there's some project called XEV. This shows you what's happening on the laptop. So if I go over to the laptop and let's say I press that uh, touchpad disable. So right now the touchpad is working. You can see what's happening. And let my finger off, touch the button. And you can see it's sending that, that system key. Same goes if I hit a function key on the keyboard itself. So if I'm on here and I was like, you know what, I want to remap um, the airplane mode on this and I don't want to use airplane mode for whatever reason or I want to remap it to launch a custom script, I can do all that. So let's type function and then hit the airplane mode. And we can see the, the key code that's being used, everything, and then map that out into our own script. So how am I doing that? Let's go ahead and quit out of this now that we understand how I'm grabbing uh, the key device and the IDs. I use a certain hotkey service uh, with my window manager. So I'm just going to go into config this and then I'm just going to open up my editor and then kind of pull in and let's go to the bottom of the file where I did a lot of these custom mappings where I did like the monitor uh, mapping. So if I want to take the brightness down, I would just issue these commands anytime that function keys hit. So the special command for disabling the touchpad, because I mentioned earlier, since I'm not using a desktop environment, I couldn't necessarily use their project, but I could reference it using that key. So using XEV, I was able to hit that hot key and then I changed it right around here to where if XF86 touchpad toggle happened, it would run this script, touchpad.sh. And I made a special bash script, which I'll, I'll go ahead and publish this. So if you do buy like a tuxedo and you want to do like a window manager and you want to use these custom functions, you can. So I'll cat that touchpad.sh and you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pulling it in uh, using like X input and then reading what touchpad uh, device because that device ID can change on subsequent sub reboots. So I wanna go ahead and read it. There's probably a quicker way to do this but this is my quick and dirty way of doing it. Grab the state and then if the state is uh, enabled, disable it. If it's uh, disabled, go ahead and enable it. And then it just kind of goes back through and does those things on the fly just by running this script once through uh, every time I hit that button. But you could type in any, any script to do it. So really a neat feature on these laptops. And there's a lot of other laptops you can do this too as well. It just depends on that keyboard and how functional it is. The beauty thing again with the Tuxedo is they have their own kernel module so you can have access to pretty much any of these function keys. And since they send out everything in Linux and all the projects are open source, it's just a win-win for everyone because you're going to always have access to those keys no matter what. You don't have to guess. It's like, oh gosh, if I buy this you know, mainline laptop, am I going to be able to map that function key? Well, you know if you buy a tuxedo, you can. Now, for those people that want to do old school gaming and you don't need a, you know, a dedicated GPU, pretty much anything, you know, 10 years or older, are, it plays just fine on this thing. I haven't had any issues. I did, of course, load up Steam on this system. So let's pull 
pull it up and we are running off battery so you could actually plug this in get a little more power or oomph from it if you need so it will play a little newer games than what i'm going to pull up i'm just going to pull up like lord of the rings online i think that's a pretty easy game uh right now i think a roughly 13 year old game 12 year old mmo uh, it has some updates and it is like directx 11 i think even directx 12 now uh but i think i still run it in directx 11 just for compatibility in linux but if you're your windows users it should be able to play this fine let me go ahead and load it up but even at directx 12 settings it still looks pretty good i mean i'm not huge into gaming and graphics but for this being like an older mmo i kind of like it so if you want to play wow or any of that on this laptop you won't have any problems i mean those most most of those old you know you can play on a potato not a real big shocker here i did load up like cyberpunk and uh, some of the newer games just to see if it could modern intel integrated graphics could play them uh, obviously for those you're going to need a dedicated gpu for cyberpunk i could run it at 720 on low at like a 10 fps not playable so I wouldn't count that as a success. I also tried Elden Ring, same thing. A low settings, it was it was a little bit better, maybe 20 FPS, but to me, still not very playable. Uh, so modern games, you're not going to play on an integrated GPU. Get the dedicated if that's really your thing. However, these older games, man, it just chugs right through. You're going to get your, your 60 FPS and not have any issues. As you can see with this, uh, playing this game through Wine, it's emulated through Linux. So even if you're doing it on Windows, it should probably be even a better experience. Now, one other project that is super cool that I have to show you about Tuxedo is their Tuxedo uh, Tomote. Tomate. Uh, I mean, it's probably a foreign language and i don't speak anything but bad english and i always get credit correct corrected for but if we do a list there's some really neat things they do they do uh, the a port fix the runtime fix uh they have their own linux uh, kernel that you can install and it uses its own messa utilities the control center mirrors uh, i as you see i block their mirrors i'm actually on the official ubuntu mirrors is in my past review video i was like hey i don't like how their mirrors are overseas and i would like to use something a little more local now i still grab their mirror but their mirror is a bit slower for me because it's all the way in germany so i prefer to use the official ubuntu mirrors and i just block them from changing that other than just to say hey if they have any independent packages like this one it will grab it from their mirror and then uh the the tuxedo repos are in there and then also the touchpad switch so it automatically installs all their utilities and this just kind of manages it so if something let's say you don't block the mirrors it'll go ahead and let's say i have the official ones i go to reboot and i didn't block that it'll go ahead and change it and make it exactly how it should be it's just like an automated tool for those uh, that are maybe less tech savvy that don't want to go in there and constantly be messing with stuff or Let's say you mess up your computer a lot uh, when it comes to laptops because you're trying to get a certain driver. Well, this just installs all the drivers you need and it automatically fixes all your repos for you. So you're always installing the proper drivers for the laptop. I think this is an amazing one. I'd love to see every single Linux manufacturer follow this type of suit. I know K-Focus has something kind of like this too, where they do like a full on bash script, uh, but I believe that's KDE only. This is the first one I've seen really kind of independent. I love Love how Tuxedo did this. And I just want to give them a shout out on this project and a lot of their other uh, open source GitHub projects because it's it's rare to see this in a laptop manufacturer. Let me know your thoughts and everything down in the comments below. I know uh, Linux laptops get covered a lot by the Linux guys, but I just love these types of things. And I had never seen anybody do a laptop review quite like this, where you go through and kind of look at behind the scenes what laptops are capable of. Because more often than not, especially if you're looking for a Linux laptop, I see too many people grabbing like old ThinkPads and stuff. Nothing's wrong wrong with that, but they're just not very powerful. And if you're actually developing on these machines, you need something like this guy. It will do the hard work that those used ThinkPads from yesteryear just won't do anymore. And, and the newer ones are, are frankly just too locked down and proprietary to, to be bothered with. Now, I'd love to see a more reversal. There's one other laptop that I was thinking about getting, and that was the HP Dev 1. I thought, hey, that was a really good step by HP, but I've been burning by HP in the past, so I decided to not go down that realm. And that's why this is my new daily driver. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Also, let me know what you think of the new studio uh, angle and setup. I'm still tinkering around with stuff, uh, but uh, we'll see how it goes. With that, have a good one, guys.